Across the radio dial, a powerful new underworld is breaking down the established order. While commercial radio struggles with recession, pirate radio is booming, with hundreds of stations stealing listeners and profits that legal broadcasters say should be theirs. Today's pirates are slick, professional operations, filling Britain's airways with everything from street music to extreme political messages. There are now almost 300 stations, twice what they were 10 years ago, and the profit some now make suggests this crime really does pay. If you're putting the right infrastructure in place, your business ideas are correct, you can gross from between 30 to 60 grand a year if it's run properly. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you important information. Radio advertising works. The key is bringing advertisers, those young, hard to find listeners. Mr. Kidd sells adverts for half a dozen Birmingham stations, taking his media packs to clubs or nail salons and promising to undercut the legal station's rates. If you come to a pirate station, £1,500, you could get, ooh, at least six months advertising. A pirate station will give you the same quality, plus you're getting the DJs mentioning it with a little bit more heart because they're told to. Just as the 60s pirates led to Radio 1, today's outlaws are creating number ones. Acts like So Solid Crew have broken through from illegal radio to major record deals. It doesn't bother the pirates that they face two years in jail. They're, they're part of household culture now. Everyday household entertainment culture is pirate radio stations, especially in London and Birmingham, cities like that, Manchester. So you're personally not bothered about the threats of criminal action that you face? Um, no, not really, no. They leave their £400 transmitters on tower blocks and hope they're safe from government raids and rival stations. Some pirates have cut the odds by keeping dogs on the roof or booby-trapping transmitters with CS spray. A recent police raid in Lewisham, South London, unearthed in a studio this DIY manual for pirates, with everything from contacts to guides to building a transmitter. And then, of course, there's the internet. Stations claim that they're bringing new listeners to the dial and that this crime has no victims, not according to this legal station playing adult cool music to southwest London. There are people sitting in the sales area who are trying to sell this radio station and they don't want it being interfered with by people who have no right to be there. So yes, they are, they are nibbling into our income, um, taking, possibly taking away our, our listeners who find it irritating and affecting you know, the livelihoods of these people. Legal stations are getting desperate. They say the fines, just £377 on average, are too low. They're now suing individual DJs and calling in the DTI, but complaining brings its own risks. One of our presenters had his vehicle uh, in the parking lot of the radio station smashed up, uh, and we believe that was as a direct result of uh, notifying the DTI about the, um, about the pirate radio station. In Glasgow, Club FM was raided after organising gang fights live on air. Another local station told us it had been giving pirates like them a bad name. They're advertising gang fights and this one's getting it and that one's getting it. And we can't be bothered with all that, we're all too old for all that basically. And it's just, we're here to play music and make sure everybody's listening to the tunes that they want to listen to. But some stations are speaking out for their communities. Sandra Lewis has a three-year-old daughter who needs a lung transplant in America. It will cost £50,000, which three South London pirates are now helping her raise. So many people have donated so many money. One of the stations has tried to go legal, but its application was refused. Its supporters weren't surprised. After all, Galaxy FM urges London's black community to empower itself against white oppression. What we are doing as a people's radio is debriefing our people, yeah. right? Debriefing them after 400 years of going through mental slavery. You are turned on and tuned in to Interference FM. For some stations, the politics are even more radical. 
This next tune's called Radio Babylon and it's specially dedicated to all you Capital Radio listeners out there. Interference FM preaches anti-capitalism to London, Bristol and Brighton. On election day, its message was stark. Vote for nobody, because nobody will change anything. And politicians promise, promise and renege on their promises, left, right and centre, continually. Do you believe you're more likely to be taken off the air than the music stations? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we, we are dangerous because we are there offering alternative views. When we start giving out the actual facts, we are dangerous. You're dangerous to who? To, to, to the state. Radio stations that just play uh, music can last for two, three months. You know, we last five, six hours. The DTI's Radio Communications Agency sees raids like this as the most cost-effective way to police the airwaves. Yet, for a station selling lucrative adverts, one lost transmitter is a mere business expense. No destruction for today. If raids like this are meant to silence the pirates, then the system is clearly failing. With more illegal broadcasters than ever jamming Britain's airwaves, their listeners and advertisers seem to want something they're not getting elsewhere. Yet, almost every station we spoke to said they'd go legal if given a chance. Then, it could be for the market to sort out just who survives.